welcome to this very special episode, yes, of the football podcast, the one where we made history here in Turin. My name is Rocky Heyakaya, and I'm joined today by Eintracht Frankfurt and Austria midfielder Laura Feiersinger. Hello, Hello welcome today. And we have a former team, uh, teammate next to you, um, Jovana Damjanovic. You play for Bayern Munich and Serbia striker. Welcome as well. And then all the way by the end, we have Sam Miller, content creator. Thank you so much for joining us today. And also a special shout out for all the people here. Thank you for joining us. And of course, our online viewers for the Replay Stronghouse. Good to have you here. So in this special edition of the Football Podcast, we're going to talk about the development of women's football. I'm curious to know if this is the season where it's a turning point. We have the Champions League, we've got the Euros coming in. Is this going to influence the future of European women's football, but maybe also worldwide? So that's what we're going to talk about. But not before, we're also going to put some focus on this incredible exhibition that we have right here, the Queens of Football. Um, well, we're lucky, lucky enough to, to be able to see it right here, but you're also lucky enough to view this one online after the final. So make sure you check that out, the Queens of Football. So, okay, we're here in Italy, right? So we've just got the news in that the Serie A is gonna, the Serie A feminine is gonna be uh, professional, fully professional uh, next season on. So Laura, how big of a step is that for the players here in Italy? It's very nice to see. Um, I play for. I played in Austria, and um, this is something I wish for Austria as well. So um, I'm, I'm very um, exciting, and also, um, yeah, for me it is. It is, or it should always be. You know, um, something that every country should should go for. Yeah. Definitely, it's so important to make that, uh, make that process where yeah. we're all able to be professionally. Uh, do you think, what is this going to ask from the players? Because it's also going to be a switch in lifestyle, right? Yeah, of course, but I think every player um, wants to have a professional league or wants to be professional, so I think they're all in. Excited, yeah. yeah. Let's get it going. So, Jovana, uh, they're joining England and Spain as uh, yeah, professional leagues. Um, why do you think, yeah, well, we already stated this, like it's important, but why is it important to, make, to keep on making this progress? Because, for example, in the Netherlands, we don't, we don't have that yeah. fully professional league. For sure. I think it's a big step for Italy because, I mean, now that they're professional league, their soccer is going to improve a lot because, I mean, if you want to sign some good players and they know that the league is not professional, they'll probably think, oh, maybe I should not go there. I'm not going to go to Juve. I will go to England or to Germany when, where the league is professional. And I mean, Italy has a lot of great players and good teams. So I think that's the thing that they deserved. I mean, we saw this year Juventus. They were amazing. They did yeah. some huge things. And I just think that's a big step. So, okay, Sam, um, with the growth in the season of the last season and the tournament and also the Euros that's coming up, uh, how important is it um, if we look back to 21 and 22 as a, as a key turning point? Do you think that really this is going to be the season where we're going a level up? Yeah, definitely. I think you just have to look at the attendance figures in the Barcelona game. Record attendance, over 90,000. It was incredible. Crazy. Were you there? I was there. Of course and you were you there. you just yeah. felt the atmosphere. It was electric. And I just think even the viewing figures, you look at zone and the numbers they're attracting. And the level of professionalism going up, you can see the difference in standard, which is attracting more fans to the game. And I really believe that the last few seasons has been a massive turning point, and I think it's really impressive, and it's only going to elevate the game even further. Yeah, nice. All right. So I'm interested to hear this from all three of you, uh, because you all three are professional, you're, you're playing as professionals, you're working professionally uh, with women's football. Um, as whether if you see or have the perception that the last years, uh, what's been changing in the stands, uh, with your club, do you really feel um, that it's been changing the women's game and what uh, does that mean to you uh, individually? Um, yeah, I think I actually felt the change. Um, it's um, with, I play for, I played for Frankfurt before and now I play for Eintracht Frankfurt, so the, the men's club from Frankfurt. They, they took over our old club and it's really nice to see that 
that they really want to to help women's football grow and um, yeah it's it's really nice to see i mean if you like watch all the games now um, it's great how the level just went up and it's also nice to to finally be able to to watch women's football because when i was younger i was never uh, or i was never able to to watch women's football games so um, i think this is also a very very big step it's a great thing, as Laura already said, like when we were younger, you know, you hadn't had a chance to watch any women's soccer game. You know, I grew up in Serbia and women's soccer was nothing. No one played it there. You heard maybe on like read it somewhere, okay, there were a girl or like a woman's team that they're playing, but you never had a chance to see it. And with this great thing that the zone and <laughs> WEF are doing, uh, yeah, I think everybody now has a chance to watch it. And I think it's just gonna help women's soccer to grow and not just like here in Italy or in Austria or in Germany, but also like in a smaller countries as for example, Serbia is. Right. Yeah, exactly. And both of you, I think all of us, we're, but especially you being on the, on the field, you're role models uh, for the younger generation. And uh, you just said, like, you don't really have had those role models. But how does it feel to be a role model like that? And especially coming from Serbia, how, how is that for you? It's such a cool thing, you know. I'm not aware of that, you know, because I'm living in Germany and we all know that the Germans are kind of cold, you know. They're not showing <laughs> emotions in that way. And then, like, when I'm home and then when those, like, little girls or, like, um, some younger teammates, when they see me, I just, like, can, like, say that they're, like, really looking to me, like, oh, what I'm doing, what I'm eating, you know. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it's, like, super weird because, like, you feel it, like, 24-7 is somebody looking at you, but I'm like super happy, like also like to talk to them and to help them, to make them better. I hadn't had the chance, you know, like to talk with someone who like is playing at professional level and now they had like a way more possibilities like to see everything. Yeah, that's crazy, right? To be, to be able to be a big of an inspiration like that. How is that for you, Laura? Yeah, it's similar. I mean, sometimes it, it feels surreal because yeah. um, young girls, they come to you and you're like, oh, huh? do they really <laughs> yeah. want to talk to me? So, it, yeah, it always makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I don't see myself like that. But it's also very nice and um, all the girls are very sweet. Yeah, maybe it's more uh, something also of, of humbleness. It's yeah. like maybe yeah. uncomfortable, but it's also, you know, being humble, of being in that place. So, Sam, same question for you. Uh, how, how has this individually impacted you, the, just the change of women's football? Well, there's been such an increase in exposure, marketing, and for me, doing social media content, you notice that there's such a demand of people wanting to see the women's game. And even, for example, I'll be on the train and I'll hear people talking about women's football, whereas I don't think you quite had that before. And um, when the train goes past different stadiums and different age groups are saying, oh, you know, Spurs women play there or Arsenal play here. And just hearing all different types of people talking about the game, you can see that it's just been like a really monumental season where you've seen such a change. And, and like you said, so many people are looking at players now as, as role models and inspirations. And it's been, it's been special. What about all of the positivity? Because we're all maybe a little bit also in the bubble, but it's like Champions League, Juros is coming up. Um, oh yeah, what, what do you think about all of that positive energy around the game? I love it. I think it's brilliant. You can see that more and more companies are now investing in it. There's a lot of hype around the women's Euros. I think it's going to be massive. You can see by the ticket sales how many people want to be going to the game and just a real excitement building towards the summer and even just throughout the whole season now. And you can see that the level of professionalism has gone up and it's making it really tough to win the league and then everyone's talking about who's going to win and there's just been a real change, I think. Yeah, I think we're all feeling that. Uh, Jovanna uh, and Laura as well, you're both on the top of your game, um, playing professionally, but um, growing up, there wasn't that career pathway where you're like, hey, this is where I become this professional player. Now we have that. But how was that at the beginning of your career, um, creating this pathway all on your own, Jovanna? Yeah, it was way different than the girls are having it now. When I started playing, I played with the boys until age of 16, you know, because they were not like 
uh, like some women's team for girls my age. There are like like few women's team, but they're like all like 20, 25, 30. And when you're a little girl, you don't want to play that with them. You want to be with like somebody who is your age. So I think those are the th things that are changing now. It's like way more like football teams for younger girls where they can play. And also, I think some other things are way different. As we already say, now they had a chance to see women's soccer. Now they had a chance like, to meet us, to go to the games, to like, do different things. And I mean, also, like, before you didn't have Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or whatever, you know, they can also like, get in contact with yeah. us. And those are the things that are super cool and super important for women's soccer. I remember as a young girl's, uh, girl, I used to be a goalkeeper. Uh, I was driving a letter. Uh, I was writing a letter for uh, to one goalkeeper. He used to play at Inter, Francesco Toldo. Yeah. And I was like mad that he never answers, answered me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like now, I know it's probably the, le the letter never arrived. But now, the girls when they are like writing us, they can write us on Instagram or wherever, and you will see it, and you can just take 10 seconds, 15 seconds to answer them, and yeah. they will be super happy. Or just to give a like. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it depends what they write. Of course. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I get that. I, I actually had the same experience where I used to go to the trainings of Ajax uh, from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and I was a big fan of Edgar Davids, and I remember just like drawing something and making a paper and then putting my phone number or my <laughs> house phone number, like, hey, do you want to come and play football someday with me? And then, of course, he never called, and I was like, why is he not calling? But then I, I did end up playing with him, but that was uh, a lot of later with the street football. But it was really, that was just the old school way, right? And um, Laura, how was that for you? I mean, that career pathway, you have to create that all by yourself. Um, it was actually quite hard because I, I left home when I was 17. And um, the club I went to, it was my first club in Germany. And it was not very professional, but um, over the years, um, everything de developed and um, it got so much better. And I'm also proud that, that I had to go through this because mm. I think you, you value things just more. But I'm also very happy for the girls that they, that they start at a higher level now. Yeah, so you kick down those doors and uh, you open them up for the next yeah. generation. That's so amazing. Um, but not everyone has the ability to become a professional player. Um, and we all know that the power of this game of football is also like there's so much more value than just become this professional football player, which is amazing. But uh, how important is that accessibility uh, for football, especially if you look into Serbia? Uh, but in general, how important is that accessibility? Yeah, it's very important. As you already said, football is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. If it doesn't matter if you're a religion or whatever. It's just for everyone, and everybody's enjoying it. You know, it's and everybody's talking about soccer. You know, or football. Like I would just like like in the future that people are also talking about women's soccer the way they are talking about men's soccer. Okay, the yep. Champions League final, it's a great thing. Those are things that we are looking forward and I'm really, I really think it's going to happen in the future that people are just going to sit in a cafe bar drinking a coffee and talk, oh, Lyon is playing against bars. I mean, those things are happening now yeah, also, but, I, but yeah. not at the level that the men's football is experiencing it. Yeah. And we're all building that, right? We're all part of that, uh, of that development. Okay, so we all know uh, we don't have to look too far to see that the, the interest in the women's game is growing. We can see it in t media and television coverage. We see it in the investments of brands. We see it with the record-breaking crowds in Paris and Barcelona. I mean, Sam was there. She was the only one, right? Anyone else was in Barcelona in Paris? With the no, yeah, we see some people there. Nice, good for you, um, Sam. So we're think we're talking about big moments. Uh, today is a big moment as well. But how important was that during the last campaign uh, in the in this Champions League? Massively important. I think just being there and experiencing it. Like I said earlier, it was literally electric. It gave you goosebumps. And I really like the fan culture I saw. I think they're really building something where there's the same group of fans, actually, that I've just seen out in the streets now. And they, <laughs> cool. they remember me. They said, oh, hi, yeah. you're back. I said, well, yeah, I couldn't miss the final. But you can just see that they've created this family environment where the same people are going to games, creating chants. They're all um, just one big inclusive family. And you just absolutely love to see that that building of something um, around a club and 
yeah, to, to hear the chants in the stadium echoing throughout and see it full. And they really helped, I think, with the players when they were playing out on the pitch. They really could hit, feel the fans and hear them. Yeah, yeah, and, and curious to know because Barcelona, big club, uh, but the men's team is not really performing at the moment as we're as what everybody is expecting. Um, is that also maybe playing into the popularity of the women's uh, women's side? I think so. Everyone wants to go watch Barcelona women at the moment because they're so successful, they're dominant, they're scoring incredible goals, and they're a fun team to watch. Why wouldn't you want to go watch them? And have you seen any of the male players uh, of, the, of the Barcelona side um, supporting uh, the women's team? Do you see that happening? You see some of it on, on social media and I think gradually over the years we're seeing more and more and it's something that's often spoken about that the women do want more support from their male counterparts and I think gradually we're seeing that in the game now. Yeah. And then uh, also for Laura and Jovana to, to know is that um, I would like to ask you, is it also for you naturally that you go and support the men's side? Because we do see, like we, as you said, you see it on Instagram, you saw Mbappé congratulating the, the women of Paris, Paris Saint-Germain um, getting into the semi-finals. Um, do you also like naturally support the men's side of the club that you play for? Um, yeah, very much. Um, I think Eintracht Frankfurt is a very special club. Um, we support each other, so many girls are always going to the games, but also um, the, the male players are coming to our games and also the, um, the coaches. So um, it's very nice to see. I haven't seen it like this before um, at the club, so um, it's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. And how is that at Bayern Munich? Yeah, I mean, we are also going to the men's game, but unfortunately, they're not visiting our games still mm. that much. I mean, there are like a few players in the past, they were visiting our games, but the thing that you can see is still they're like following it, they're, support us, they're, they're supporting us, they're sending the messages on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. So yeah, but of course, as I already said, I would wish that they're like coming to the stadium, stadium more often. Yeah, why is that important? Because I, I totally understand that. But, uh, and yeah, you just said you wish that. Um, is it also that you could reach out to the men's side or what, what needs to happen? I think like, I don't know if they don't have time or whatever. I don't want to discuss about it. But I think it's also like for women soccer, super important that they're coming to our game. I mean, Mbappé was in Paris or like some Frankfurt players. When people say that, for example, Lewandowski is coming to visit our game, they'll think, oh, cool, he's there. That's probably interesting. I want to watch it also. I also want to go there. If Lewandowski is there, then he's probably super nice and super cool. Definitely. And I think like, like just like few times coming to our games we can it can help us a lot and yeah. not just to barn i just think it's every team is like that definitely we need those male allies uh, in the game for sure all right moving on to the next because we've talked a lot about all of the positive energy but for example on the bus ride uh, to here i was speaking to Eunice beckman shout out Yes, about uh, <laughs> uh, also about all the challenges and difficulties because there is still a lot uh, that needs to change in the game to make sure, uh, yeah, to elevate the game. Um, there are also expectations uh, on, for example, um, yeah, uh, the societal attitude, mental, um, yeah, you know, the trolling online and all of that. But Giovanna, uh, how do you deal with the negative perceptions uh, or attitudes that can sometimes, um, yeah, that you sometimes can get as a women's footballer? I try as good as possible to ignore that. Yeah. But uh, the bad thing is my mom is always like reading the comments and oh, then yeah. she's making a screenshot and <laughs> sending it to me. And I'm like, mom, you're not helping me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm and she, like, your mom wants to fight those people? Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like really trying, like also like not to read the comments that much, like because people are writing like different things or you know, it's always, you can have good things, you can have bad things. I mean, the good things are good, but it's also like, okay, it's just like one game. You do, you didn't need to fly because of that. And the bad things, you can, it can really inf influence your mood. So I'm really trying not to focus on those things. I know how good you, I am, or I know how bad I am. You know, I actually always know, like, how was my 
uh, think on the field, you know. So I'm like really trying just to focus on myself, on my teammates, if it's something, if I'm like struggling to talk with them, not just to go online and read some comments. Yeah. So yeah, and I think ignoring is the best way. Yeah, I think so too. But then uh, now your mom needs to start ignoring them. And I mean, if you give them attention, you know, they'll just yeah. keep doing it. It's always like that. So just ignore them and yeah. it will be fine. Yeah. And Laura, is this also an additional barrier to you? Maybe even for the, for the mental state, what Giovanna is uh, talking um, about? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think everyone always knows if, if your performance was good or, or not good. And um, I mean, there are so many people outside that, that say bad things or think bad things. Um, I think you just have to filter it and have to, to make sure, okay, um, what's important for yourself and just don't, don't listen to everything. Yeah, yeah, good one. So ignore, that's the, that's the big, biggest advice. Um, Sam, you, you actually create all of this content. What's your uh, vision on this? I think it's always about focusing on the positives. I've noticed that through creating content, a lot more people are investing in it. They want to go to more games. And I always look for what can content create. And also the feeling of people feeling like they're at a match, for example. I think you can't replicate that. So like people from different countries saying, oh, I feel like I'm there when, when I watch your content. So I think for me personally, that's been really nice, just seeing all the positivity through content. So I try and focus on the change it can create rather than the, the negatives. So let's do that. Let's get back to the positive side because Sam, I'd like to know, you know, you know yeah, let's like practice what we preach. Um, so if we look into how we can elevate the game, I'm curious to know what do you think the next steps are to, yeah, to get into that direction and to, yeah, to just go more levels up? I think for me, the most important thing is increasing attendances on a regular basis. So we talk about the big moments where we're getting record crowds, but we want to see stadiums full week in, week out. So I think that should be a, a main focus. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on to you, Giovanna, what do you think? Adding I on to that. I definitely agree with her. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Done? No. Okay. So we can go to the game? No. Let's go. No. And, any, anything else to, because for example, um, uh, me, myself, I have a, a grassroots uh, organization uh, in the Netherlands. And one of the things that we focus on is yeah, making that accessibility for all of the girls to play. Uh, how important also, um, we also already spoke a little bit on that, but how important is it to keep on engaging new generations uh, of girls and how can we do that, Laura? Um, yeah, it's very important. Um, I think it's um, not just in, in football, but in, in the whole world that you have to activate or make sport attractive for, for young people. And um, it's a big challenge, but um, I feel like um, when, I, when I do the, like the vlogging thing with, with Eunice and everyone else, it's such a nice project. And um, we just hope that it um, yeah, helps to animate um, those young girls. And I think we just need more, more things like that and um, show everyone how great the game is. Yeah, I think it's all part of building that culture, and that's also what you're doing, Sam, with all of the work that you do. Um, just build that culture and make sure that it's accessible uh, for everyone and create those, those stories. So, talking about next steps, of course, we have on the horizon the big Euros coming up in England, being the host of the Euro 2022. Um, Sam, <laughs> yeah, how excited are you? I'm very excited. I think there's so many countries now that are on the rise that have had a tra transformation that I think people need to look out for. And I think it'll be an exciting summer. Hopefully we'll see some underdogs do really well. It's one of those Euros where you can't really anticipate who's going no. to win it because there's so many strong countries. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, and then is England going to do it, do you think, this summer? I mean, I hope so, but I'm actually yeah. looking at Sweden right now, thinking they're Ooh. a very good side. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to say the Netherlands, but okay. Um, <laughs> let's move on to you, Laura, because you're playing Group A. You're facing, I think, one of the top favorites, uh, because also, I mean, it's the home advantage that, ha home advantage that they have. How are, how are you feeling? I mean, just over a month ago, um, yeah, how are you feeling? 
Um, yeah, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> I can't wait. So. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's, it's great. It's great for us, for Austria. Um, and I think this is something I will never forget. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely one that's, that, that we uh, will remember. Um, how, are, how much are you looking forward? Are you gonna, are you gonna go be in England or are you just gonna yeah, watch I'm at home? I'm gonna be a spectator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like me, no worries. No. Yeah. As you. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be together. Yeah, for sure. We're uh, supporting yeah. the Netherlands? Uh, I'm supporting, yeah, I have also like some <laughs> former teammates there. I'm supporting every team where some of my former teammates are playing it, so Netherlands also. But I just think the Euro, it's going to be probably the best Euro since ever because it's a lot of great teams, a lot of great players, and really looking forward to it. And as she already said, you can't tell who is going to win. It's, you have like probably 10 or 12 teams that, get the chance to win it so it's gonna be a tough one okay so I think it's time to get into the Q&A's because we have some people here live so don't be shy try and ask a question but I also have some um, questions on my iPad this is always exciting if this is working yes actually are okay so from live online hey live good to have you here also all the other uh, viewers online please don't uh, forget to submit your questions because you know we've got some superstars over here take your chance ask a question um so question from live what is the most challenging part of being a footballer let's start with you laura the most challenging part um maybe you have to to make a lot of sacrifices you miss family times you miss birthdays maybe this would be the the biggest yeah yeah and you're se you were 17 when 17 you yeah yeah so young. i yeah i left everyone and i was quite homesick at the beginning um so it was really hard but um i experienced that the first year was the hardest year and if you get over it or if you make it through this year then everything gets better yeah <laughs> that's good to know because also i mean uh, we, you, we, you have a beautiful life you're playing professionally or yeah, you're here and but then there is a lot of struggle into like becoming uh, where you are right now, right? Yeah. Cool. Yes. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, Jovana, maybe also you want to answer that? Yeah. As Laura said, like you need to make a lot of sacrifices. You're missing the parties. You're missing the birthdays. Uh, you're missing a lot of things like all, all family events. You're like, oh no, I cannot do that. I cannot go there. I have a game. You just have those like free week, few free weeks in the summer and the winter, and in all other times you're just like focused on the soccer. Those are actually the things actually that are like the hardest. Yeah. So all of those sacrifices, but it's worth it. Yeah, yes, for sure. Of course. Worth it. Okay. We're we not have complaining. <laughs> that's good. That's good. you can always. It's okay. Uh, so Carolina, also one of our We Play Strong viewers, she wants to ask Laura, uh, what's been the highlight of your career so far? I think this is her highlight, being here course, in the podcast. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> Um, I think the Euros in 2017, yeah, I think it was a, a great time for Austria. Um, I enjoyed it and it's been five years now, but it feels like it was yesterday. Nice, yeah, I agree with that, the Euros in 2017. Great momentum <laughs> for the Netherlands. Okay, so uh, Bella, also somebody who wants to ask Sam uh, what her dream piece of content would be. Probably uh, next summer, the uh, World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. I think that would be really cool. So, yeah, we'll, we'll aim for that. Nice. All right. We have some questions in the room, I think. Yes. Oh, hey, that's somebody we know. <laughs> Can you maybe introduce yourself and ask your question? Yes. Is it on? Yeah. I yeah. Think. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Hi. My name is Bella Linden. I used to play football. Um, yeah. I got a question for, two, for both of you, for the players. So what advice would you give to young girls who want to play on a professional level one day? What advice? Um, I th Thank you. <laughs> I Good think question. if you like, if you're passionate for something or have passion for something, then um, you should always stick to it and um, yeah, follow your, your, your dreams. Um, I think you should always, um, what I experience is that that women's game, or that football, can also be unfair sometimes. So it's sometimes it's also hard to um, yeah to see the positive things. So I think you should always try to to enjoy the game because this is why you started because you love the game. So um, yeah, I think enjoying is also a very very big part. 
Yeah, have a lot of fun. Yeah, have a lot of fun. As yeah. you can see in the vlogging, as you've been uh, been doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe you also want to answer that question. Yeah, I just think they're also like, as Laura said, they need to enjoy it. And uh, football is a tough sport. You know, sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not working. Like the things that you're doing at the field. But also, we all need, or like the girls need to be patient and just like to keep working. The moment when the hard is, you just need to stay patient and work hard, and then somehow the things will work out. You just don't need to quit, because quitting, blah, man, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the game. Yeah. All right, we're going into the last question. Also, a familiar face. Hello, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> you. Hello, um, I'm Karen Carney, a retired footballer. Yeah, not, not just a retired footballer, <laughs> but okay. We'll talk about that later. What, what's your question? My question is, we've seen record attendances broke in particular in this competition. What records would you like to see now broken in the women's game? Go on. Yeah. You go first. Sam, maybe, Sam, maybe Sam. Let's go yeah. Sam. Yeah. And then we go. Yeah. I think league attendance is, is the next big step. Uh, Champions League obviously attracts the glamour, attracts everyone to watch. But I think if you can do it in all the individual leagues and also I think just like we said earlier, different leagues now going full-time professional. I think that will make a, a huge difference. And yeah, hopefully we just see more and more football fans getting through the gates. Nice. Giovanna, Laura, anything to add on that? Nope. No? <laughs> Good. Uh, I just saw the Barca fans in the city just like yeah. walking around and singing. I think those are the things that I would like also to see more, to see those chorus of people just like walking through the city, being happy that uh, the football games in the city at that day. And as she already said, I definitely agree. Nice. No, we hope you enjoyed this one. And thanks again. And be sure to subscribe and follow We Play Strong. Give them a warm applause. Thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> and thank you also viewers. We'll be back soon.